Okay, welcome. Um, since we're recording this, I'll just get started just um, to make sure we respect everyone's time here, but we probably don't need a whole lot of time to get kicked off here. We just wanted to um, get back to a former tradition we had prior to the pandemic with Frisbee um, of having just an informational session to be able to make sure everyone knows what they need to do um, if they want to, if their students want to join Ultimate this season. Um, and kind of just, you know, both to get registered and whatnot, and then also just kind of how this, this season will go. Um, so this is mentioned a whole lot of times, um, and we'll go ahead and make sure this is linked somewhere within the Great River website environment, but the, the quick way to get to our STARS website, which has any of the links and stuff you would need today is um, tinyurl.com slash stars ultimate, and that should take you to a Google site. Um, if you have any issues getting there, people can contact me and I'll talk about that um, a little later too, but just so you know, anything that we talk about today, any of the resources you would need and stuff, um, I've tried to make things pretty navigable there and pretty easy to access. So um, if you've got a student ready who's ready to get registered, you um, can start doing that tonight even. So appreciate you being here and um, we're looking forward to hopefully another exciting season. Um, Middle School Ultimate, I think, has grown every year we've done it, so that's pretty awesome. Um, and I think it's a, it's, it was my favorite teams to coach because um, it's a really great league to uh, learn how to play frisbee, but also just develop and um, foster a good community and whatnot. So, oh, also I'm Kate, and I am the coordinator of Ultimate programs at Great River. I taught there for eight years, seven or five, six, five, six or seven years ago. Um, but I stayed involved with uh, the ultimate program since then, just trying to make sure that we have consistency throughout the years as um, people graduate and keep the program strong. So talking about middle school here, um, if there's a some pretty substantial difference between middle and high school when it comes to registering and stuff like that. So if you happen to have a student who's in both, there's some overlap, you can come to one meeting and then you can just check out the website for the other stuff too. But we're gonna focus right now just on uh, middle school ultimate, what the teams are like, what it's like, to, or what it means to join and whatnot too. So as I mentioned, um, I like to start with communications just so you know, um, if your student signs up, how we kind of get you the information you need over the course of the year. Um, so like I said, that STARS website is is where I try to keep all the materials you might need if you want to go access stuff on your own. So getting the registration stuff, um, I'll put updates in there if we get information about fundraisers, stuff like that or whatever. Um, and there's a session, a section of it that has a calendar that I keep updated. Um, so just a live Google calendar. Um, I didn't plan on this, but why don't I go ahead and just show you that website as well while we're here. So as I mentioned here, yep, we've got the 2022 season information. You've got links directly to registration information right here. Um, there's also information on registration up at the, uh, up the top too, you can get there that way. And then the schedules calendar piece, I'm gonna talk about what the schedule looks like, but throughout the season, you can check back here for updates and whatnot. Um, so when practice starts and stuff like that. So. Just so you know, that's what that looks like and you have access um, to that at any time. Um, via email, what we do is when the season starts, um, we'll give updates about you know what's going on this weekend. Um, what, for instance, we'll probably have at least three teams. So you'll figure out you know which, which team your students playing on and therefore you know which field they'll be playing on for their games and stuff. Um, the schedule for the middle school teams will be the same for everyone. So even if you had two students who didn't want to be on the same team, um, they'd all be in the same place. So it's it keeps the, the carpooling and driving a lot easier. Um, but basically weekly, we'll, we'll make sure email gets sent out saying, hey, this is what's going on this week and whatnot once the game season starts. Um, and then any specific updates that happen to have like um, that we need to let you know of. Um, if you've had a student in Ultimate before, you know that when it comes to the state tournament, at that time, their game time might change depending on you know how they played and whatnot. So those kind of specific updates, and then anything weather related, um, we'll send out via email. We haven't had real success with getting a, a strong like text network. I know it's sometimes easier to be able to get those messages um, pushed forward like that. Um, and later on, I'll ask if there's parent op parent volunteers who want to kind of help support some of these things. And in the past, we've had some parents you know set up some text type networks and whatnot. But if we happen to um, need to cancel practice or 
um, anything you know like that changes, we'll make sure we get those pushed out uh, ASAP. Um, and occasionally there's team specific tools, although that tends to be more of a high school thing. Okay, so the schedule for middle school is this. Um, we will, for sake of ease, we'll just start middle school after spring break. The high school, we usually try to get out as early as we can, but it ends up being we're, we're fighting against the snow um, or it's super, super muddy. So um, for sake of ease, we'll start, and this allows people to get time to get registered as well too, but we'll start um, meeting for practice on Tuesday, April 12th. Um, you can register anytime before then. In fact, we re I recommend registering ASAP, but um, that's the day we'll first convene for practice. Um, and then practices are Tuesdays and it says Tuesday, Tuesday, but it's Tuesday, Thursday, my bad. <laughs> Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3.30 to uh, about 5.15. We basically kind of get kicked off by the softball players right around then. Um, and 3.30 is basically gives students time to get their stuff, pack up and just walk down from, um, from school. Um, another thing that we'll make sure we get coordinated before that first practice too is getting a group of students um, and possibly slash ideally uh, you know, a, a more adult presence from Great River to walk down with them too. Um, but there tends to be a lot of kids walking down to McMurray at the same time, so they do so in packs and it's um, safer. But giving kids a place to meet so they know where they're going is useful and we'll make sure that happens. Um, so those are practices just every week, Tuesday um, and Thursdays. And they're basically from April 12th until um, our state tournament, which is May 22nd. Um, there are four sets of games and they're on Sundays. So, um, and they, they go from one to 4 p.m. So that's when we have student, they'll get two games each Sunday and they'll, they'll happen in between those times, a little break in between. Um, and those are the dates listed here. And once again, all of this stuff is also on that calendar that I showed you that's on the website. Um, I'll keep that updated. There won't be any changes in location and stuff for these. That's, this is our home court and um, middle school ultimate basically only happens in two places in the cities. Um, so we get this location. And then there's a state tournament at the end, which is just two days of um, a championship. Um, teams tend to play five or six games, I think, between the two games or two, two days. Um, and the times will vary, but we'll know more when that comes up. But just as, as an FYI, when it comes to just planning um, your schedules and stuff around Ultimate, these are the, the times you should block off. Um, and practices at McMurray. I think I said that, but that's, you know, they walk down just... Um, down Energy Park and then um, under the bridge into the fields. Um, it tends to be that most people in these meetings have already kind of been introduced to Ultimate, but um, we don't want to make that assumption ever because even though Ultimate definitely has a strong presence at Great River, um, you know, there's there's definitely the case where people might be like, oh, I'm interested in this sport, but I'm not really sure what it is. Um, so various people have different ways to describe it, but I tend to think of it like as a cross between football, basketball, and soccer in terms of placement and awareness and whatnot. Um, but it's but it's a very athletic sport. So lots of running, catching, jumping, throwing. Um, but what's great about middle school league is that um, it is built as a developmental league. So it's built in order to say, it doesn't matter what your experience is. If you've never touched a disc, if you've never heard of it before, we're here to build this and make this um, something where everyone can learn and get better. Um, and the league is really clear about, we make our teams really balanced. So, you know, we're going to have three or more teams, but we really spread out our experience in between all of those teams. Um, we are not allowed to like put everyone who happens to be our person who's, you know, going to be on varsity next year on one team. Um, so that gives everyone a chance to really get experience regardless, you know, like if you feel like you're intimidated because you've got someone who, um, and when you play on the playground or whatever, seems like really, really good. Um, the, the league is really built around saying like, hey, the, the, that really, really good player's experience is no more valuable than someone who's just learning. In fact, we want to give that uh, person who's just joining a lot of practice, a lot of uh, attempts to throw the disc and whatnot. Um, and I truly believe that like anyone can be taught to, to throw. It just takes a, a lot of practice. And at one point it kind of just clicks and whatnot. So um, we, we, we want to make sure that no one is intimidated from coming, you know, even though Great River kind of has this like long history of Frisbee and we've had very, very good players, um, that it's something that, that really anyone can join and be good at and, um, learn to play. Um, in terms of preparation, um, we just want to make sure people know that we're playing in the spring in Minnesota. So that can mean a lot of different things. Um, 
and we play outside pretty much in all weather conditions except for thunder and lightning. Um, if you were on a team last year, you, you might have re uh, remembered that we did for a couple times end up canceling just because it was going to be totally miserable, like a sleety snow, like it was late March and it was going to be basically like freezing raining. Um, so there's times in which we talk to the coaches through the, with the coaches throughout the course of the day and say, like, what do we think? Um, and try to give you ample time, like definitely by noon of that day that we would be suspending practice. Um, but typically we try to play through it, um, which just means come prepared. So layers, um, the ability to stay dry if possible. Um, so just, just know that, but we will, we'll do our best to communicate early. Um, we tend to not run into a problem. Uh, we tend to not run into the problem of it being too hot, but last year toward the end of the season, like in May, we did have a couple of days. So um, we'll always, you know, like if you want to keep a player home for safety, by all means do that, um, just communicate with coaches and whatnot. But just as an FYI, that's kind of how we run things. Um, that being said, when it is hot, please bring a water bottle. Um, that's something that we want to make sure that like encouraged each day. Um, it, it's been kind of uh, one upside of the pandemic is there's less like people need sharing water bottles and getting sick from each other because that used to be really common. But if everyone has their own water bottle um, filled up before they leave, we've had a couple times where it's hot days where the, the coaches have been able to bring down a um, some water pitchers and stuff, but you know, students need something to drink out of. So um, that's something we really want to encourage and stress. Um, we get this question about uh, in middle school a lot, but cleats are typically worn in ultimate Frisbee um, when, when you're playing at, at most levels. But for middle school, like if your student's not used to having cleats, you don't want to spend an extra, extra money on that or whatnot. They're not totally necessary. Um, I'd say probably fewer than 50% of players in middle school league have cleats. Um, they're just, your player will notice they're nice to have if it's, if it's wet because you don't fall down as often um, or if it's wet or, or slippery or anything. So um, that's just my two cents on cleats. So if you're, if you think you're gonna be playing for a while, if you think the cleats won't be grown out of, you know, every six months or something or whatever, they're nice to have, but I understand, especially at this age, that's not necessarily something we think people would love to be spending money on consistently, but that's my, my two cents on cleats. Um, one thing we, we really encourage students to change into athletic clothing before they come down. You can play Frisbee in jeans and whatnot, but it tends to be kind of uncomfortable and you're gonna get your clothes more messy. So um, like we've got students who kind of just come in their, their school wear. You'll be more comfortable if you're wearing something different than you were to school that day, most likely. But, um, you know, you could, obviously you can play no matter what you show up in. <clears throat> I do see a note from a coach here. Um, we put snacks on this list just because, you know, like sometimes, by 5.30, if you haven't eaten lunch, or if you eat lunch at 11.45, you might be starving. Um, the coaches request that students don't stop to, at Speedway on the way to the fields. Um, and we'll probably bring this up throughout the season. Uh, I get the temptation to wanna like get that after school snack and stuff. Um, I just personally can't imagine like drinking a whole icy and like uh, eating a, a bag of Cheetos and then wanting to go run real, really fast in the hot. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to reiterate that, but we, we try to encourage all our players, you know, like one, stopping at Speedway oftentimes makes you late and then we get late on starting. And two, the choice to drink a, a bunch of carbonated stuff and then run around um, oftentimes impedes your ability to want to try really hard that day. <laughs> um, sun protection, again, weather appropriate clothes. We have pennies and stuff, so the light dark jersey doesn't make as big of a difference, but when it comes to game days, we want students to bring both their jerseys, and I'll talk about that later. And one thing, I mean, just in general, if you're getting used to being in a sport and stuff, keeping a garbage bag in, in your um, in your like athletic bag is super useful for when stuff gets wet and you wanna cover it up or it starts raining in the middle of practice and you didn't realize it was going to. So again, like most of this stuff doesn't involve you buying anything. It's just a matter of coming to practice, ready to play. Um, big piece here is recruitment. So um, obviously we've got a, a handful of people here who are either ready to play or, or are curious, um, but we, it, it tends to be better for, for everyone when we've got a really good, good um, mix of, of kids and quite a lot of them because we can make more teams. And, um, and under the right circumstances, more teams means more play time for people during games. So again, Ultimate Super Fun Middle School League is, uh, is meant to include every level of player. Um, and again, I know that it can be intimidating when 
uh, during recess, it's only like the kids who seem really good and whatnot. Um, but we, we really try to like break up practices so that, so that no one ever feels intimidated. Everyone feels like they're actually getting the support and whatnot they need and that you're on a team that's really mixed ability levels. So no one has to, you know, be afraid that they're just not good enough to do something. Um, I didn't double check this this year, but in the past, it regardless of our schedule, it's typically been, typically been possible for students to do multiple um, sports or activities at the same time. I don't know, know exactly what the schedules are for some of these things, um, but reach out and ask questions if you have them. You know, we've got students who for the first three weeks don't make it to practice on Tuesdays because they have another commitment, but they come on Thursdays and they come to games. Um, we'll talk with coaches and stuff about that or you can ask me specific questions, but in general, we want to say like, if you want to play, we'll, we'll find a way for you to play. Um, it's, it's good to be able to get that experience and try it out or whatever, without having to be like, well, like I had to miss five practices and therefore I thought it wasn't worth it. Worth it. Um, and then, so this is our big thing at this point. Um, if you're here as a parent, um, you can talk to your student or if there's any players here, the number of teams we're able to have depends on the total number of players registered and ensuring that we, a team has enough female identifying players. Middle school is a five on five mixed game um, and students match up with um, a student that identifies as the same gender as them. And then there's one um, that can be mixed. Um, so between two, two, and then one. So we can't, make, we can't make four teams if we only have a total of 10 female identifying students sign up because we don't want those girls to play every single point. Um, since there has to be at least two of them in the field at any given time. So that being said, if you're someone who played last year, especially if you're a male identifying player who played last year and you were bummed because you didn't get as much gameplay time, talk to your friends or find a way to get some more girls come to play. Um, last year felt a little fluky. And I don't know if it's just because like changing demographics or the school, like there's bigger players and stuff. I know when I first started coaching, we had as many boys sign up as girls. Um, and it could be just way more boys signed up last year. Um, but it'd be great if we kind of got that back to a balance um, if we find a play. So non-binary identifying players essentially are that kind of middle one. They, they can match up with, with whomever. Um, so because it's like two male identifying, two female identifying, non-binary can be another. Um, if there was a case with a team with many non-binary, I think we just talk with the other team and kind of figure out what the matchup, um, whose matchups are most comfortable. Um, and the reason they do this essentially is to ensure that there's still a push to get more females involved in the sport um, so that they're not just being like on, on a team um, that like there's one girl and she never gets to play or whatnot. Um, and from kind of a safety, students can match up on whoever they want, but in middle school, kind of from a safety perspective, we, we tend to do uh, gender matching um, in order to like ensure sizes and whatnot um, and speeds are the same, but students can, it's ultimately who the five people you're putting out that to play at a given time and whoever they match up with, they're gonna make choices. So um, we'll talk more with students about this, but it, it, it makes, it comes into play when it comes to figuring out how many, uh, how many teams we can make just knowing, you know, if we have three female identifying students on one team, then those girls are gonna have to play all the time and we don't wanna tire them out entirely. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of, as people get registered and whatnot and, and we start practice, we'll, we'll be in touch about like, you know, where things kind of stand and what, how many teams we're gonna have and um, who wants to be on whose team and whatnot. Um, but that's just an FYI. So more people is better, recruit your friends. I have only limited reach from here, but um, hopefully we get some, some help from within the community too. Um, so I mentioned that we're not starting till after spring break, but um, Brent is trying to organize some preseason uh, opportunities to get just some practice time in or, or like to try things out with having to commit. So if there's anyone here whose students like, I'm interested in ultimate, but I don't really know, like try it out, talk to a coach and whatnot. So it sounds like, I'm just gonna read what Brent sent me. He's got the green light to do pre-practice on March 9, 16, 23 and 30. Um, and we thought we could do some just girls sessions um, for a couple of those, um, just in the gym after school till about 4.30. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, just get further, like 
solidify that information with Brent, but I'll put that on the website as a preseason opportunity with uh, a link to, um, actually that will need a link, with, with just the time and the place and whatnot. Um, I know that the high school is trying to use the gym sometimes too. So I will go ahead and put that on the website. And then outside of us, I'll put this on the website as well, the link to it. Um, for grades five through eight, just girls on the 12th. So that's next weekend, I believe. There's an ultimate clinic at Sanford um, that you can sign up for. It's totally free. Those are really cool. I think they're, they're called like gum, which is like girls ultimate movement or something like that. Um, but they're good little clinics just to, whether or not you're, you're uh, whether you're new to ultimate or experienced, um, I think those can be fun. Even if you're experienced, they're fun to show up to because you can kind of help be a mentor to other students. Um, but those are some preseason opportunities. Okay, and then the big thing is how do I get registered? So there are two steps to registering for middle school ultimate. One is doing your registration with Minnesota ultimate and that's who's gonna take your money and that's who's gonna run um, they'll get information on your student and whatnot. They're gonna give you your jerseys um, and that's who you're gonna pay. Um, so I would recommend doing that first usually just because that's the piece that's most important is, is getting good with them. Um, you'll see here the fee for middle school league is either $100 or $120 depending on whether or not your student needs jerseys. So if they've played before and they've got their jerseys from last year and they still fit, then um, do the cheaper one because they're the exact same. Um, if you are new or you've outgrown your jersey or you've misplaced your jersey, then you'll want to sign up for the yes, I need a jersey one. Um, for that 120, you get two jerseys, uh, a white and a blue. Um, and those will be here probably, the, hopefully the week before the first games. It's the worst when I get in like two days before the games and I have to figure it out. Um, so it's the same as before. So again, if you've got jerseys that will work for this year, then, then do the cheaper one. Um, when you register that it will give their student the USAU membership that they need as well, um, which is essentially just like that kind of covers them when it comes to um, a sanctioning body for insurance and stuff like that. Um, and the payments will, will just go through when you do that. Um, it should, the steps are fairly obvious when you do that registration, you're gonna click it, you're gonna say I'm registering for someone else and you're just gonna enter your student's information. Um, and there's information on that page, I think, when you start registering about scholarship opportunities. So I think it has you just reach out to someone about them. Um, so just as an FYI, those do exist, but they, they go through the Minnesota Ultimate System, not us, since we don't do any of the money stuff for middle school. Um, the second step we'd like you to do then after you do that piece, and if you have any questions ever, my, my email's at the end, but it's ultimate at greatriverschool.org. You could email me a question and I know the right people to talk to. Um, I can't fix registration problems because it's this is via their system, um, but I do know who to talk to should we run into problems. Um, the second step is to complete a registration with us. And this is really important because Minnesota Ultimate does not give us adequate information to contact you with schedule stuff and whatnot. Um, like it helps us get, a, this way we know too, like if you have two sets of uh, families or parents that wanna be contacted about everything that I have both those email addresses, but they don't collect enough stuff nor do they give me enough stuff uh, to be able to, I think, adequately communicate with you throughout the season. Um, and it also makes sure that we're, we're good on um, some forms that Great River likes that are athletic people to have. So for instance, knowing that your physical is up to date and stuff like that. Um, so even though Minnesota Ultimate is the governing body that runs um, Ultimate in Minnesota, we, we want to make sure that we have some other stuff um, that coaches feel safe and, and ready to contact people if there's emergencies and whatnot. Um, for instance, there's an optional like aller allergy asthma plan. So um, if your student has one of those, it's good for the coach to know that and that we have that stuff, right? So basically, yeah, two steps. You'll do the Minnesota Ultimate one. And again, these links are on the website. So I'll direct you there once again um, at the end, but anything you need should be clickable there. Um, we're wrapping up at this point and then I'll take questions, but um, there are some support opportunities as well. So in the past, and I'm willing to do this again for middle school, but um, in the past, we've had some parents, if they're, if they're willing to say like, hey, I can help be the person who sends out game reminders and whatnot. Um, as I mentioned, it, for middle school, I've been doing this for the past couple of years, but if there's anyone who kind of wants to help support and, you know, if you had the list of the people on your, on your player's team, you'd be willing to talk about when games are and stuff like that, then that is an opportunity. 
Um, in the past as well, I've had parents say, hey, I'd like to help run like basically a sign up genius for snacks for games for game days, um, just so that we have, you know, something fun or whatnot. Um, or I can help set up some kind of like carpool connection system or whatnot. Um, if anyone would like to do those things, um, that's an opportunity as well. And we potentially um, are looking, especially if we get to four teams, if we have enough girls um, that we are able to field four different teams, then we definitely need more coaches. It looks like we might have three on board right now. Um, Jeremy and Brett returning from last year, if you, if you played before. Um, so we might need additional coaches, in which case, if you have any interest in that, talk to me. Um, training and certification is provided. It takes it's a few steps. It doesn't take very long. Um, but if, if you are a certified coach and you've, and you've signed up and done the season, then Minnesota Ultimate pays a stipend for that as well. So for any of these, again, my email here is ultimate at Great River School. So if there's anything that you're like, hey, yeah, I might be interested in XYZ, or you've got, again, if you've got any questions when it comes to the registration piece, um, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to any of those. Um, and one thing that several people have told me today too, um, there are some high school students uh, that are, have created some STARS merchandise um, as, a, as a kind of fundraiser. So stay tuned. I'm going to put information about that on the website, too. So I'll put stuff about the preseason opportunities and that merch opportunity. Um, I don't know much about it other than it exists. So I'll make sure I get some information and put that there as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make sure. I don't think I saw any questions not from coaches and people I know or, or that we answered. Um, but I'm going to leave this site here so you know where to go to get all this what and whatnot. Um, oops, and the registration and help is not available in the gym because this is not live anymore. I just copied an old slide. Um, but are there are there questions people want to put via chat or if anyone, if you raise your hand, I can take you off mute as well. Um, Isaiah is here. Isaiah, okay, I'm gonna allow you to talk. <laughs> so I think you can unmute. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, hi. <laughs> um, uh, I am. Uh, my name is Isaiah Curtis. Um, I'm a senior at Great River. I'm one of the captains on the guys team. Um, and a bun and a couple of uh, some of the senior players and I have designed. Um, uh, a shirt not a jersey but a shirt that we can sell as like merchandise to people like fans friends family stuff um as like a fundraiser for the team and there's uh there's only one design and one shirt option which just because of uh the website that we're working with and stuff but i can put a qr code in the chat and i can um we'll send an, an email shortly um, about like buying that and stuff, but that's just one way to, I don't know, to support the team, I guess. Y yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. Yep. I'll, I'll go ahead and put that on the site um, as well. So um, stay tuned for that. Like I said, I'm got, getting a couple other questions here. Um, I hope there, there's a question that says, I'm wondering if there's an opportunity for students who have never played before to give it a try. I think that those times with Brent in the gym at, um, at Great River are probably good times to do that. Um, so I'll give dates and times for that. I'll list them on the site. Um, and that way, you know, you could even register, like decide, you know, do it a few times over the course of March and then decide during spring break whether or not you want to get in and register during spring break. We encourage early registration, but obviously we don't want your students to um, to register and then be like, oh, this is it for me and I paid $100. Um, and it's hard for us to do refunds, but they will. Um, games are played at West Minnehaha Recreation Center, which is um, it's by one of those curling clubs. I don't really know how to describe where it's at, but the, the, there will be links um, for every game that's listed here. So for instance, when the, when the kids game starts, um, I, put the, I put the location and the link to the map with the game itself. Um, someone asked, what kind of cleats do you recommend? Soccer, that would be by recommendation. Um, I know lacrosse cleats um, are sometimes used. Soccer tend to be the cheapest. Um, and you can't do anything metal. And we wouldn't want that anyway. Um, so like soccer, yeah, kind of whatever's cheapest. I'm guessing as long as it wasn't like 
a metallic thing like a softball cleat or something a student might also already use would be fine. Um, just thinking about the way, you know, ankle support and stuff like that. Like if a student's used to a set of cleats in one situation, not in the other, just make sure that they're comfortable. <laughs> uh, uh, um, okay. Yes, I will add the gear list. I'll actually put this presentation in the website. Um, so I'll go ahead and make sure I just linked this and the videos and stuff from today I'll put there too. Um, try to make it a one-stop shop. There was someone had posted, they clicked the link to register and don't see. Hopefully these work, these both work. So if, if you go to register, register and go to middle school, um, this Google site doesn't doesn't hyperlink these, but that should be the current that first one. Yes, this goes to 2020 middle school. League. Oops, 2020. I got to update this link. So stay tuned one second. Um, it didn't update my link here. Um, but either way, actually, if you just if you were on that site, if you click events in the upper right hand corner, this is where you'll see all the stuff and middle school. This is the link I'm trying to get you to middle school um, spring league. You're able to register right here. So if you see 2020 middle school spring league, I'm going to go, I'm going to go fix this um, link right after we get done talking today. So I'll make it sure it goes to 2022. Um, but once you, then you'll be able to click that, but otherwise you can go find it from the site that it takes you to um, just by going to events. Um, and this is the GRS ultimate one. And I, man, for both of these, I got to update that link too. I don't think I, I don't think I saved my changes when I worked on my Google site earlier today. So I'm going to go ahead and ensure I do that immediately following this so that people can do this right away if they want to. My bad. I think I updated the high school stuff and published that, but then not this. So good questions and so yeah, basically like, these two things that you need to do, the links are not correct right now, but they will be in within four minutes of finishing this presentation. <laughs> is that is that right? Someone says the, okay, yep, I just didn't update the title of the form. So this is the correct form, but I'll go ahead and change that because this, this is the place where it actually does have the correct link. So you can actually go from both here, but this is where the link to the correct, um, Minnesota Ultimate. Um, and again, yeah, this is this, it might help as FYI too, because this is in a couple pages. It might help to fill this out with your students somewhat near them um, or somewhat near you because the, the last page has some student preference stuff. Um, we've always had a separate survey. We were asked kids like, is there someone you want to be on your team with? Will you tell us? Because when we start formulating the teams, we do try to give everyone at least one buddy if they have one. Um, but there's obviously stuff that like it's you're going to have the information so students really can't students shouldn't fill this out themselves but if you can do it um in tandem it's helpful because the at the end of the, the survey it'll ask a few questions um just about their preferences and whatnot so the someone asked what are the dates that students can try out ultimate in the gym i'm gonna i, I just have them in chat right now from um brent but and i'll put these on the site but he said he could do the he could use the gym on the 9th, the 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th. So just if you're kind of writing those down right now, but I'll go ahead and make sure I get that um, updated shortly too, so. Make myself notes. Okay. Good questions and um, and then Brent says of those days, probably girls only for the first two and only seventh and eighth on the 16th, but we can, um, I'll make sure I get things figured out. Um, if there happens to be a ton of, I know there's a key experience on the 16th. So um, we wanna make sure that we don't, you know, between key experiences and stuff, we don't make it so that a student wants to try out but can't because they don't qualify or, you know, if it's a boy that's gonna be at a key experience or whatever, but I think there'd at least be one day then. But I'll clarify all that with them and get it on the site, but as an FYI. 
and actually that is a good we'll, we'll keep clarifying Brent's saying he he would like for those days to be just for beginners so if you happen to be the parent of or a student who happens to have played a ton and you just want to get your play time in um i think we'll we'll leave those as a time where people who can come kind of experience it for the first time um we want to make it friendly and also the gym is not that big and who knows maybe it'll get warm and the snow will melt and we'll be able to start things early but every time i plan on that we get a 16 inch snowfall over spring break <laughs> Okay, well, um, I'll go ahead and let people um, get going unless you can you can stick around and ask questions if you have them. Um, but as an FYI, yep, I'll, I'll update all the stuff I've said on the sites and whatnot. And ultimate at greatriverschool.org is the way you can contact me um, anytime with specific questions or general questions or whatnot. Um, and I look forward to a great season. I'll hang around for a little while in case there are questions. Great, I'm like hearing people, kids are excited about playing ultimate. I love that we're growing the sport down to younger ages and ensuring a, a very long and continued storied history of Great River Ultimate. <laughs> If you're just joining, welcome. Um, as I mentioned just a moment ago, we're just gonna give it a couple minutes at the beginning here to give people um, a chance to get logged in and whatnot. So we'll get started in two or three minutes. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, we'll get started and if people roll in, we are recording this so we can make sure anyone 
gets caught back up if they need to. Um, also, I'm going to post this information on the website, um, the STARS website tomorrow. So I'll put the recordings as well as um, the, the slide deck. So if there's anything that you saw that you want to remember, I'll make sure that that information becomes accessible later. Um, but thanks and welcome uh, and apologies. I, it was hard for us to find a time that was like not another night for like college night and stuff to do this. And that I realized yesterday that it's the State of the Union. So we'll try to be quick if that's something you like to watch and I'm taking up your time. Um, mostly we just wanna make sure we cover, get any questions answered people have about the season, um, go over the schedule and whatnot, um, but then talk about what the registration process is like given that's kind of the most important thing. Um, there's always a few kind of lingering questions in the air when it comes to starting the high school season, like when does it begin? And that's a tough answer because the, it's basically when will the outdoors let us begin? Um, but I'll try to get you any information that we have set right now. And then, um, hello, I just talked a whole bunch while I was on mute. Uh, I can't believe I'm two and a half years into this and still doing that. So, sorry, welcome and thank you for joining us uh, tonight in order to get some um, information out about Ultimate Frisbee. Um, as I said while I was muted, apologies. We, we tried a couple different dates to, to get this going. Um, but there was college nights and stuff. So I realized today that I'm, oh, someone still heard me. I wasn't on mute. Great. I won't repeat myself. Thank you for the comments. Um, also, FYI, if you've got questions or anything or whatever, feel free to use the comments or the Q&A during this. Um, we'll take some time at the end too, if anyone wants to come off mute to say anything or questions. There tends to be more questions with high school, like things I know that'll come up, like what about jerseys? And what about tournaments and stuff like that? So there are things that are still up in the air, um, but I'll, I'll, try to kind of quickly go over the, everything that we have set so far, knowing that we're gonna still have some works in progress when it comes to uh, when, you know, when we're gonna start and all that kind of stuff. Um, and once we kind of get these communication channels established via registration, um, we'll we all be talking with coaches and whatnot too, to be able to kind of make some of these decisions that are tough to do before we actually get the season started. So um, I'm Kate. I have worked with the uh, Great River Ultimate Program for a long time. Um, I worked at Great River for eight years and I've been elsewhere for about six or seven years now, but um, I'm happy to stay on to kind of make sure our Ultimate Program stays um, alive and thriving. So appreciate everyone being here. Um, as an FYI, anything that I, um, anything that I'm gonna show you in terms of like links and stuff today are available at our STARS website. And the fastest way to get there is tinyurl.com slash STARS ultimate. I think there's a way to get there via the STARS homepage, but I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that's still a thing if it's not just so that you have an easy way to, to click to get there. Um, but this, that's a, um, a reroute that'll take you via our Google site. Um, and I keep that updated. In fact, there's a bunch of stuff I need to add for tomorrow um, with some recent stuff that had come up. But just FYI, the stuff I refer to is there. Um, and then anytime you have questions or concerns, whatever, um, ultimate at greatriverschool.org is the way to get a hold of me. Okie doke. So we're talking high school here. Um, just that like we always kind of start out with all those, these got all weird and stretched out or whatever, but happy to see people here. Happy to see uh, um, the tradition of ultimate at Great River is still thriving. We've got um, a long history uh, that is storied and awarded, um, but more so than that, I think it's just cool that, you know, we are a very small school compared to a lot of these other players out there, but we um, have a big presence in terms of the history of uh, Ultimate in Minnesota. And it's great that we still have players so enthusiastic and, you know, kids have gone on to play at all different levels and whatnot. Um, and many have come back and are still helping us coach and whatnot. So um, things that I love to see as someone who didn't really know what Ultimate was when I great, joined Great River. And then I started to, to help coach our little like mixed team in those first couple of years. Um, just seeing it, it grow and thrive has been super awesome. Um, just as an FYI, when it comes to the season, I like to start out with like, how do I get information? How do I know what I need to know? Um, basically kind of two big things. The STARS website will be where you get any of the information where um, you're gonna go self-select anything you need, whether it's links to get registered, um, I'll put any updates and stuff on there. For instance, I'm going to add some things that I'll talk about later involving a fundraising or merch type thing. Um, and there's also a season calendar there. So I'm going to show you just real quick what that looks like, just so we can kind of navigate. So the homepage, any kind of uh, update information will just be on this homepage. So this is where I put the information about the 
um, this meeting. The registration information is located here, but there's also a button up top where you can just go to high school registration. Um, and I'll show you more about that in a moment. Um, and then there's a schedules calendar page where I have embedded the um, the Google calendar that I'll keep up uploaded or updated throughout the season that has all the practices and games and whatnot. Um, there's a lot of stuff we don't know at this point in the season because uh, the schedule has not been set for like games for when you know the boys and girls teams are playing. Um, but we tend to get those in like two week two week, two week increments, and I keep that updated. Um, on this this calendar so you can always kind of go there as a source of truth um and i'll also we'll have someone kind of explain earlier on too there's you can go directly to minnesota ultimate if you want to get that information before i even do um so that's the the website where you can get that stuff um another means of communication is once you've got registered and we have your email we will be sending out information um regarding the weekly games um any updates and whatnot um and that's also where it doesn't happen often, but should we need to cancel practice or anything, we will um, use email to do that. Um, and then periodically, and this is kind of something that evolved this season, um, there might be team specific tools. So if the coaches and their players want to use GroupMe or um, some other form of like where they've worked things out, typically I stay out of that kind of stuff um, and let, let them work it out or the players might have something where they can talk to each other. Um, we just want to make sure, you know, they're able to communicate stuff, but anything that is necessary for families to know, whether it be changes in, in schedules or canceling of practices and stuff like that, that will get that out via email. Um, I'll get to registration stuff, but I tend to do it at the end because that's where the most, most of the questions are. Uh, but just in general, as a reminder, we play outside in all weather conditions, um, except for thunder and lightning. So um, there, there have been times including last year um, where we've canceled middle school practice and I've asked the coaches if they'd want to cancel high school as well if it was like particularly terrible remember last year there was like a day where it was going to be like 35 and raining um, and we decided it just, it just wasn't worth it <laughs> um, so there's times that, that happens but otherwise basically the assumption is that practice is happening unless you've heard otherwise um, and if we do make calls for a given day we try to make those calls by noon um, because we realize it's difficult to change plans in the middle of the day. If you plan on picking someone up at 530 and all of a sudden they're done at three. Um, and obviously the, the school can help facilitate anything where we make changes, but we try to do it as minimally as possible so that both kids get practice time, but also we don't disrupt people's lives. Um, so in which case plan appropriately, make sure you bring the right stuff to practice. Um, most of this stuff I kind of put in for middle school, but it's been a while since I've been coaching high school but just remember like bring your water bottle every day there might be days in may where it's 90 degrees um and it's challenging to be down at mcmurray where we don't know if the water fountains are on on a given day or whatnot so coming with a full water bottle from school highly advised um if people have questions and you're new to ultimate here some of this our presentations tend to assume you know students might have played before um but if you're new to ultimate and have further questions you can reach out but we recommend having cleats, wearing athletic clothing versus just whatever you wore at school that day to be comfortable. Um, if it's going to be a long practice or game or whatever, make sure you eat things that you've had a snack or something. Um, and especially on tournament weekend type stuff, sunscreen, weather appropriate layers. Um, we would love and their coaches would love for you to each day, you know, bring your stuff to school, but have have lights and darks. I think we were we did pretty well in having the practice pennies last year. Um, but I'm, I'm never totally relying that everything from last year will like turn back up. So this is generally, you know, ultimate stuff, like the way you'd show up to a pickup game, bring stuff that's appropriate. Um, it's great to have a garbage bag in your, in your Frisbee bag at all times, because if it starts pouring rain in the middle of practice, you can put your bag in there. But that's mostly just kind of a weather statement. Um, Two, I like it's it's hard for me to know at this time of year what our team situation looks like. I tend to get the question like, hey, are we going to have two teams? I don't know if I've heard that one yet because people have been talking to each other. Um, but everything's dependent on, you know, numbers, how many kids come out. Um, we've got there's a ton of kids who are playing been playing middle school the last bunch of years. And I hope I hope that many of them are here now. Students who played middle school and have decided to come play in high school. Um, but those of you who've been playing for a little while, make sure you're finding those kids who played before and that they, they feel comfortable joining. Um, that I feel like there can be times where kids can get intimidated as new ninth graders and whatnot, but um, but 
we want to make sure that this is something where we really are, are valuing inclusiveness and um, we want we want anyone regardless of their ability or experience to be able to find a place to play because um, we're definitely going to be able to use everyone we can. Um, and if anyone this this always comes up too, and I have not yet this year, like last year, I guess I didn't get to talk to other organizers of after school events, but it has always been possible for students to do other activities and ultimate. I know the big one we've fought with sometimes has been the musical, but I think that's happening sooner than it used to. Um, but we, we're, we're invested in, we wanna make this work. So when we had students who were like main roles in the musical and maybe had to miss a bunch of stuff at the beginning of the season, but then they could come back, um, we'll always work with coaches and stuff to make sure things are cool. But um, my, my two cents has always been like, I want you there, especially if you have someone who's been playing ultimate and all of a sudden things are different. We want you to be able to be able to continue your ultimate um, career at Great River. So we can talk about working out schedules. People can always reach out specifically with questions and I can direct you to the right people. But that's, um, if, if you've got friends who are on the fence, you know, like that's a piece where we can, we can work that out and you can encourage them to play. Okay, so season schedule is, if you've played before, it's pretty much the same as other years. Obviously, the dates of a few things change, but we practice on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, um, and then you don't practice on the day you have a game, basically. So once the season games start, uh, everyone will have two days of practice and one game a week. Um, Preseason practice has kind of been TBD. I know that people have been kind of doing that stuff on their own. The boys have worked via Donovan to reserve the gym and whatnot. So um, I'm not involved in any of that. I'm happy it's happening. I prefer to stay not involved, but I'm glad that you guys can do some stuff that's um, organized and whatnot. Because um, people at Great River know who to talk to better than I do these days. Um, once we have the first, we'll have the first week of regular practice at McMurray softball fields, basically when we know the fields are clear and safe. Um, and I realize that's a, a tough moving target where you want to be able to put this on a calendar. Um, on the, on our schedule, I think I put it two weeks from today. Like if every single day was like it was today until then, we'd probably be able to start then. But this weekend, it looks like it's going to be messy. Um, so basically what I might encourage people to do is register fairly early and then you'll be in on the communication loops when it comes to being able to publicize this, but we'll also, once we can kind of at least say, okay, it looks like next Tuesday, we're going to be able to go, I've driven by McMurray, it looks fairly clear, um, no one's going to break their ankle in like a mud pit, um, and so we'll be able to, to start, then I'll make sure we, we, um, announce that stuff by the GRS announcements as well. Um, but yeah, like I, I kind of put a fingers crossed just two weeks from today to start outside um we're, we're kind of able to start there as soon as we as soon as we can um so that being said the first game for girls is the, the first week of games is is starting march um 28 so the 29th and the 31st for girls and boys respectively that's the week before spring break so if all goes well and there is clear playable fields and we've got our teams all set we'll be able to play um our first game the week before spring break and then, as always, we'll have to read, um, we'll have to reschedule the game that's scheduled for the week of spring break. This always happens. They started schools have different spring breaks, different weeks, so we always have to reschedule. But um, we'll communicate that stuff as we learn it. Um, and then the state tournament this year is on June fourth and fifth, so that will be the end of the season. So basically, starting the week of the twenty eighth, um, girls will have games on Tuesday nights and practice Mondays and Thursdays. And boys will have games on Thursday nights and practice on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh oh, okay. So there's a Q and A here. The ninth year bike trip leaves June fourth, so double double uh, booked. So that is good to know. It is not unprecedented um, where this has happened before, where the bike trip has left the day of state, and we have been able to make special accommodations to let our players join later but that means i'm going to go ahead and write this down to make sure i um talk to the right people about that um it's again not unprecedented for things to overlap especially there's been years where state was way later because we couldn't start late because weather was so terrible or obviously the year last year covid threw some wrenches in when we could start later and stuff like that so um thank you for letting me know about bike trip um, for those of you that, that this will apply to, just know that that's something we'll, we'll start working on 
some solutions early and it shouldn't be something players are worried about or change their opinions about doing stuff. Um, someone asked what captain's practice is and I put that on there with a question mark because Historically, there have been um, upperclassmen who also wanted to have another one more practice a week um, that was not required and there are no coaches in attendance. So essentially it's run by the students um, to do basically meet at McMurray and um, at the regular practice time and, and run their own practice. Um, that's something that captains can communicate with their own players um, if they're wanting to do. Um, our opinion, the leadership and coaches and stuff has been attendance at those should not have any correlation on anything that's help, that's happening during the season in terms of like who gets play time and whatnot like we're not um it's it's not a required thing and therefore um we don't want any of the stuff that happens in the season to be contingent about it um however it gave people more time to play together get more you know athletic activity in and stuff like that so like they could see some benefits um you know from a physical standpoint and a teammate standpoint um so i wouldn't i wouldn't say you need to like work your schedule around those right now but once this once the season gets started and your players get to know each other and stuff um they'll know whether or not that's an opportunity that's happening um and it could be at the end of this if someone you know someone from the girls or boys team on the captains or an upper class would want to say hey yeah we're planning on doing that or no um you can let me know but that has been something that people have been interested in, in the past that we 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 told people about just in case you know like yeah cool well i'm free on wednesday afternoon so i'll also go to that but as an fyi for um, adults out there there are not um traditionally coaches or um an, an adult presence at those Um, oh, FYI, yes, too. The practice location is McMurray, so kids just walk down to their school or drive. Um, I know the start time, we still say 3.30 just to try to get things going as quick as possible. Last year, I know there was some like a later class that we had to bump things around, so ideally we can kind of stick to these, but last year there was a whole group of students in like theory of knowledge that had to, we, had, we needed to be a little bit later, um, so we'll make We'll make concession or adjustments as necessary, but this has kind of usually been the, it's mostly the times that we have uh, McMurray reserved when we start getting kicked out by softball players at the end. So, um, and our games this year will still be at West Minnehaha Rec Center. So that same location, not too far from school. Um, we should be good. That's for home games. Um, there are there are half, in theory, half our games will be playing at someone else's field. So that's why I try to let you know pretty, as far as advance as I know what the game, who the game is against. So, you know, if you're going to drive to a diner that night um, or if it's going to be something that's a little closer to school. Um, fortunately, they try to keep us in our conference for most of the season um, so that we're not playing against schools that are super far away. We tend to stay over where I think we're in the West Metro. Um, so most of our games are on the St. Paul side of town and West versus um, needing to go to like St. Louis Park or something. But I say that with a grain of salt because as soon as we start kind of getting into the tournament part of the season or, or the, where they're doing crossovers, then, then things change up. But we've never had to drive to like St. Cloud or Red Wing. Um, everything's in the Metro <laughs> during the week. Okay, so registration um, is slightly different this year if you've registered before, but there's really three parts total. Um, and I wanna make sure that everyone ensures they have their three, three parts done, um, or at least has a scholarship for the third part. So I don't think we've ever done this in the past, but this year you're actually gonna register directly via Minnesota Ultimate for one of the parts of this, um, which gets you associated with our team and gets you totally like all uh, squared up with them in terms of being like a legal player who can play in tournaments and play in games um, and makes us like makes our roster complete. Um, this is, this is good news because it basically, like we used to kind of have to do this on the admin side and we'd attract down your USAU number. And um, and then when it came to state, we were like doing this really like uh, fast at the end because someone would be like, hey, your team's not really legal to do this yet. Um, so I like that this change is happening. Hopefully they're gonna try to combine these even further in the future years. If you played middle school league and you know you finished your coal registration and paid them, that's how they did it. Um, at this point, it's still a little bit different, but you're gonna do this registration with Minnesota Ultimate Step, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. We also want you to register with us, do a Google form that gives us your contact information. 
uh, because unfortunately for us, when you do this registration with Minnesota Ultimate, they do not give us enough information to contact you adequately. Um, they only give us one email address and that's about it. So if you want two uh, guardians to be contacted you know, with anything, um, we also get your direct like emergency numbers there. And we also get some uh, additional forms that Great River would like us to have. So for instance, knowing that your physical is updated and stuff like that. So the second piece is really for ensuring that we're good to go in terms of communicating with you, but also um, the school feels like you're, you're good to participate in the sport. Um, and then the registration fee, there's not really a way to tie that into either of these other ones. So it's kind of the third part that's on its own. And I'll, I'll show you what the options are for that in a second. Um, and we have scholarships as well. Okay, so the registration payments um, for this year, um, in order to cover everything we need to uh, run a season, we, we ask that $175 is the registration fee um, as a check or online payment. However, we want every student who wants to play regardless of ability. Um, so we can do deferred payments, we can do reduced fees or scholarships, in which case you can just email Ultimate at Great River School and just say, hey, I'm interested in a scholarship opportunity. Um, we don't, we, we, we pretty much tend to grant those. Um, like, obviously we have a limited capacity with which we can fund them, um, <clears throat> but it hasn't been so great that we've been like, oh no, we can't run the season this year. Um, another way we facilitate that is if people want to, when they register their student, donate any extra um, in order to help fund the scholarship of someone else um, that helps keep our, our program running as well. Um, the other thing that gets paid for, um, not to us, but that is the other part of a fee, is every student needs to have an active USAU membership, um, which is $34.50. There used to be an option if you'd never had one before to get it cheaper, but I don't know if that changed. Um, but I'll, I'll show you in a second too, that now is part of your registration with Minnesota Ultimate. So now you don't need to go to your USAU. If, you, if you've done this before and you used to have to go to USAU, pay them the money, get your number and then use it to register. Um, now you can actually just pay that as part of your Minnesota Ultimate registration. So, and I would recommend you do it that way. It's way easier. Um, but just so you know, those are the, the two kind of costs that are associated with the season. And then as I mentioned before, yes, register with Minnesota Ultimate and Great River. Um, in general to those registration fees, we, we've, we did really great fundraising for a while. We had some good coffers um, in terms of helping support both scholarship need and then also tournaments. Um, at this point, that 175 kind of gives us to almost the bare minimum, um, given that we have to pay for uh, any kind of field space and we have to pay the league entry fee and state costs $800 per team. Um, these kind of things end up adding up. So we try to keep the fees low, but at the same time, we were trying to make the program viable so that we, you know, we're not running into the red after a given year and whatnot. And I'll talk more about tournaments in a second because those aren't necessarily accounted for in our financing right now, but um, we can kind of make discussions with players over time. But I wanted to show you just a second or just what our, um, what the website looks like where it's got all those links for the registration. So if I go to register and high school registration, shows me that same thing, what I need. Um, it's got the information for payment here that goes down. Um, if, you've, if you've played before and you re, like last year, I know my PayPal buttons weren't working, but in general, you can just PayPal or Venmo us too, as long as you include the student name in the note. I put the, the PayPal um, location and the Venmo here. It used to be too, if you use this PayPal button, you had to pay, we had to like cover a processing fee for $181. I'm, I'm trying to decide at this point, like, in theory, given this is a good or service, it would charge us for those. Um, but if you're just sending money directly or whatever via PayPal or Menmo, um, we might be able to get away not paying those fees if you just send the 175. But essentially, check PayPal or Venmo us um, for, for that piece. But then here's a spot where you're doing the register for Minnesota Ultimate and GRS Ultimate. So if I click the register for Minnesota Ultimate, it takes me to a page where I sign in and create account. But once I do, it's going to say, OK, like, who are you, what, what team are you registering for, et cetera. And I linked, so underneath that, I linked this Minnesota has provided a handy guide to individual player registration. Um, I recommend looking at this before you do this because I, I, the Minnesota Ultima account, if you've used it before, um, is, can be very clunky, um, just like knowing what to look for. So I've taken you to, the, to this first step where you've got the right page, but then it shows you exactly what you're gonna need um what steps you're going to go through in advance and whatnot so you can get the information you need 
in advance. Um, if the student needs to be there to sign their waivers and whatnot, they can be. Um, but if you look that over, it'll basically show you the steps that you need to do to, to, to finish that. Um, again, I'm excited about that piece because basically during that process, you're going to say, hey, I'm registered. Hey, I have a USAU membership and I am joining Great River Boys or Great River Girls. Um, and that means that our rosters are totally set and we're actually good and legal before we actually start playing, which has kind of never been the case because tracking down everyone who's, you know, tied to the team and stuff has been in too many different locations in the past. So that is um, the first step. I would recommend doing that first again, um, just because you have that USA information. And then that second piece is just a Google form for us where it's saying, hey, um, I think I put both those in. Um, hey, this is our contact information. You know, both both sets of guardians want to be contacted. Um, I'm good on my physical stuff or whatever. Which team are you joining? What grade are you in? Demographic information that's very useful for us in terms of uh, forming these teams and whatnot. So those two steps. Uh, um, okay, so that, and if people have questions on the registration piece, um, we can field them in a second too. But just in general, parents' role, we want to talk like we want you to either, obviously, we know many students can drive at this point, but make sure students are be able to be picked up. Um, and I'll talk first uh, in a second just about like some other volunteer roles. Yeah, here we go. So last year, um, parents really stepped up, um, parents and families and stuff really stepped up in order to be able to help us run a season. We didn't have our traditional coaches returning. So we, we found um, awesome coaches that are returning this year or whatever, but that were not old enough to require supervisory needs. Um, so we had people step up and be chaperones um, in order to make sure that we were uh, like legal each time. USA Ultimate is very, USA and Minnesota Ultimate are very concerned about having um, licensed background checked individuals um, of the correct age at every single event so that everything is really safe and um, above board. So um, with that, I would love if people continued to, to find ways to support, whether it's in a small way or a consistent season long way. Um, it's really the, the best way to ensure that we continue a legacy of, of Ultimate. We, we basically had a lot of students in the last couple of years whose parents were involved for years and years because they were in the programs from like when they were in sixth grade through 12th grade and there was maybe a couple kids and they graduated. So we've sort of lost some of our like board that we used to have more or less. We used to have kind of an advisory board. So if people are interested in kind of serving on like in that kind of capacity, I know we still have some people here that are part of that, um, you know, where we've got students who are still part of that, but I know we, um, the Silver Fernandezes were involved for a long, long time and, um, and some others. So getting some younger um, guards in here is, uh, is an important thing for me. Um, so a couple opportunities that exist. One that I forgot to put on here is um, we've got our coaches and they're certified and whatnot too, but we do need at least one sh um, chaperone per team, someone with a, a chaperone certification with USAU. Um, it's not that hard. It basically means you get background check and you take this thing called safe sport training. Um, even if you're never at an event that like I had to do it, even though I'm just the coordinator, um, but it's, it's checking a couple boxes and then we have you assigned with our team with our roster and it, it basically checks the box on our rocks or say we're good. Um, doesn't mean you have to be there to chaperone anything. We just need the box checked, which is makes sense in some ways and it's a little counterintuitive in others. So we'll need a chaperone. Um, I would love if there is someone who is willing to step up and kind of be team communications lead. Um, in the past, I've done this for all the teams and it's a little, uh, unsustainable with my current roles. So essentially what that person would do is I'd, I'd give them a list of the email communications who wants the, the um, who wants to be contacted when and whatnot, and then do, do like kind of do a quick overview of this is how I find the information about where the games are this week. And this is how I, you know, like, and then I just send that information out to everyone. Um, so like even I, I kind of have a template for it. So I will keep the calendar updated and whatnot, but sending emails that are just giving updates and stuff is um, fairly challenging. So if there's people who are willing to, to possibly do that, um, I would love if you reached out to me. 
Similarly, I know some students uh, have been working on some fundraising opportunities and I, um, and actually, you know, like that team communications could be a student too. So um, that's a thing we could talk about. Oftentimes it's been the coaches, but it's, it's the coaches have so much put on their plates to begin with that I sometimes like to take these things off and say, coaches are there to, to coach and support the players, but they don't have to be running team comms. Um, but if student wanted to do those things, because you're pretty much as aware as I am of what your schedule are, um, that could work. Um, but in the past, you know, we've had we've had people who've kind of thought about like, let's think about the long term vision of, of ultimate, like, how do we keep, again, a sort of fun balance that can mean that maybe we're able to go to tournaments without extra money, um, or, you know, support students through the fund rate or through the scholarship type stuff. Um, so it's it's been in the past, it's been simple things like it's, I guess it's fairly easy to sign up for like the Devani's or Chipotle, like 10% nights, and then advertise those things. Um, but in the past two, we had some parents like do a parent and like adult alumni mixer night with a band and stuff like that. So from the simple to the more complex, um, but ways that kind of like keep our community centered to like where this is, um, you know, you get to know each other and stuff on the sidelines and whatnot, but and, and your students are really playing together all the time, but we, we kind of keep that community aspect alive. Um, and then I think, I think I've got headways on this or whatever too, um, but I, I like to mention this in this meeting because there tends to be a lot of parents who might have a player who's like in college or graduated or beyond or whatever. Um, but the middle school program might need more coaches this year, depending on how many kids come out. Um, so if anyone knows of anyone interested in that, they could send me a message at Ultimate there as well, um, Ultimate at Great River. Just um, like I said, I think I've, I've got some irons in the fire, but I wanna make sure that they're good to go. <laughs> And I'll probably, once people get signed up, I might harp on some of these again if we need to um, get anything filled. Um, this one, I don't know. Yeah, Isaiah's here and so is Rosa. So I, I might just have you go off mute and, and give a quick quick update. But as an FYI, tomorrow I'm gonna post some information, um, some seniors uh, or at least upperclassmen, I can't remember whatever, what grade everyone's in, um, have created a, a STARS t-shirt to kind of do as this fundraiser thing to start off with. Um, Isaiah, I'm gonna allow you to talk again in case you wanna mention it. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Hi, um, I'm Isaiah. I'm a senior, uh, captain on the boys team and uh, our friend Sebastian, uh, who's also a captain, designed a sweatshirt. And then Rosa made a website um, and there's like a QR code and stuff. Uh, it's basically, it's not a jersey. It's just like a t-shirt like uh, with a logo on it. And it's a way for everyone, you know, friends and family and stuff to support the team. Um, uh, yeah, we're selling them for the next like three weeks. Uh, so if you want to buy them or if your friends or family or whatever wants to buy them, they're, yeah, that'd be cool. And they're a great thing to wear to games and stuff like that too. Thank you. Cool, thank you. <laughs> um, yes, and like I said, I'll, I'll get that information from them. I'll put it on the site. So um, I know we had talked about some additional opportunities too to like, you know, where can we do spirit wear type things? Um, so especially if we can maybe hook up, like I know the stars or the Great River has its own little spirit store that already exists. And I don't know if we could get branded merch in there kind of permanently. So you could just order stuff whenever you want, but this is a great opportunity to something that is designed by a student to begin with early on. And um, we will, we'll see where things go from there. Thank you. Um, okay. So things that I know that I didn't address thus far because I need to talk to the correct people. Um, and it's probably not a full group thing or whatever. Um, I don't have strong answers on jerseys right now because I haven't been talking to players or coaches specifically. Um, I know Heather Thomas and I have been doing some of the lead up to the season and whatnot. And we've kind of talked some strategy on that, but I know there's conversations going on that I haven't been privy to. So at this point, stay tuned for jerseys, um, just like you're staying tuned for when we start. And I apologize that I don't have answers to those questions. Um, the other question that probably is coming up that I want to talk to coaches more than anything, but then also get a financial sense of what the season's going to look like is, are we doing any tournaments? Um, at this point, our budget did not talk, like consider tournaments um, with our registration fees. 
Um, that being said, if we had enough students register, we could very well do tournaments without asking for additional funds. Um, otherwise, it, those tournaments might end up being something where we need to chip it because they, they're $500 for a bid usually, or I think. So the, the one especially, did I put it on this? I thought I put it on here. Uh, yeah, so I put Hopkins Hustle as a question mark on here. Hopkins has been a very accessible tournament because it's close by. Um, it's Mother's Day weekend, which is either cool or not. <laughs> um, but that's that's one that like uh, most of our kind of like um, competitors in the region tend to go to, and it's it's a great tournament. It's been going for a long time. It's easily run, but the bid fee is I think five hundred dollars per team. So that might be something that you know if if players are available and want to do it, and coaches are available want to do it, um, we'll have to look at our finances and say, okay, we can only do this if we're able to either fundraise x amount of money or people are able to, you know, pay a little extra to do that one extra tournament and stuff. Um, that's kind of been the struggle in the past when we've done these tournaments is we try to really make stuff accessible and kind of built in so you're not being nickeled and dimed all season long. Um, but we, we also tried to keep the threshold fairly low here to, to say like, you know, anyone who wants to play, it's not some huge insurmountable fee. Um, and last year, with the COVID situation, we didn't do any tournaments, so we kind of kept things low. So we, we're, we're needing to kind of reevaluate the future what's our what's our how many tournaments do we want to do what's involved with that but the nice thing about Hopkins is we're not paying for it's it's in town so we're not paying for hotels and um buses and stuff like that which end up costing a ton versus just the bid fee um same similarly too I know Lucas and I talked about um Lucas as the coach and I talked about there's there's a lot more of these like little things where like Edina is hosting a round robin tournament that's just one day and stuff. And those tend to be a lot more affordable. So on a case by case basis, there may be times where we talk to families and say, Hey, you know, if the, if the players and the um, coaches talk at practice and be like, Hey, is this a thing we want to do? You know, this kind of mid April tournament and stuff. Um, and if they say yes, then we'll start to communicate any information about with them with families. But for me in this point, Hopkins seems like something we could definitely do if there's availability and interest. Um, and then we'll just, figure out the money situation there. Um, so those are the, the dates that I would say, make sure you're remembering. And Rosa said in the chat that the girls team is planning on having captain's practice on Wednesdays. I'm guessing oftentimes the boys does too. So again, those are things where if you're concerned about it, where you're like, my student wouldn't be available on Thursdays, uh, or excuse me, on Wednesdays, then no big deal. But um, it is an opportunity that we'll try to make sure everyone is aware of. And thanks for the other info in the chat. Sorry, Rosa. Isaiah just talked at the middle school one, so I put him back on mute. Are there other questions or concerns or comments? So you can either raise your hand or talk in the chat or ask in the Q&A. If not, um, and I'll hang out for a little while or whatever, um, just for, uh, FYI, I will post this, um, these recordings as well as the slide deck and the information about that um, merch on the STARS website tomorrow. Um, I think everything else is updated and good to go. I, after the middle school meeting, I had to make a couple changes where I realized I hadn't published stuff, but I think everything else should be updated and good. Um, but if anyone has questions, you know, reach out to that ultimate at Great River School um, email and I'll, I'll try to make this a one-stop shop, the, the STARS Ultimate site for, um, for you to be able to get anything you need over the course of the season that isn't emailed to you. Yes, someone asked if I'm only able, able to make it to one practice a week, is that fine? I would. I, I don't want to speak for coaches, but um, that has been the case in the past. We usually just want that that, that you to talk to the coach and make sure, hey, is this going to work? Um, but historically, that's been fine. Um, but we, yeah, we just want to make sure um, that you are able to, you know, like the, the coach is aware. Someone has a question if my daughter played last year as an eighth grader, is she a USAU member? I, I feel like they, I feel, um, 
Mm, I just don't know if they have a number associated with them because the middle school essentially gets their USAU membership via their Minnesota ultimate registration. Um, so what I would suggest is going, you, chances are you don't have an account with Minnesota ultimate, even if your student played eighth grade last year. So when you go to this um, Minnesota ultimate site, you're gonna have to create a new account for the student. And then it should basically, if, if, they, if she does have a USAU membership, it'll either sync up or it'll give a new one. Um, if you can run into problems at all during this time, like when you're going through um, signing up here, email me. I can't fix the problem because I don't have any control over this, but I know who to talk to if you run into issues. Um, I know how to problem solve probably faster than um, is evident on this site. So, so if your student played in eighth grade, I would say kind of start from scratch here, just and and it'll it should either figure it out for you or create a new one. <laughs> I need to get that. I haven't even seen the shirt yet. I'm excited to see it. <laughs> Someone just yeah placed an order for the shirts, but I want to see them too. But I'll get that information out tomorrow, so I'm sure I'll see it quick. Yeah. Otherwise, if you don't have questions um, and you feel good to go or you've got to, I'll, like I said I'll hang around for a little while or you can reach out via email but um have a great night and I'm looking forward to uh, an exciting season.